recording. Um, Giants has been one of my favorite things to study for quite a few years, and there's lots and lots of information out there on Giants. Uh, you can't find a lot in books, and for those of you who love to talk about um, government conspiracies and cover-ups, this, this is one of the biggest ones there is out there, although we're starting to break the shell. I, I understand that Smithsonian's starting to finally fess up to a few things because of the internet. It's getting too hard to keep things covered up. But you can find lots and lots and lots of newspaper articles dating back from the 1800s and so forth coming forward where a lot of giants and so forth. Ohio Valley, Ohio River Valley is where a vast majority of them in the United States are found. And, and they find thousands of them, literally. They, I've got information on one graveyard where they've identified over 3,000 giants in one graveyard and, and I have the coordinates and so forth but uh, uh, a lot of these things get turned over to Smithsonian and then nobody ever hears of them again and if you go and ask them they say we don't know what you're talking about. Uh, this is to me is, is the best, there's a lot of books out there actually that you can find. This one's got tape on it but it's called Genesis 6, Giants, uh, Master Builders of I got to look in here. Master Builders of the Prehistoric and Ancient Civilization. It's not cheap. You get on Amazon and that, and you're going to pay probably 50 bucks or more for that. But uh, but probably the best one that I found on it. But uh, to give you an idea, and I wish I could show you this on overhead. But these are showing, and they tell you the the documentation where you can find information on these skeletons. But this little guy right here, if you can see him, right here. That's six foot tall. Th these are to the scale, these giants that have been found. This is a six foot tall guy right here. Now I'd like to see, I, I've got photos in that of them up to about ten foot tall. Let me show you a ten foot tall guy. And I'll tell you what, you put a tape measure up a wall or something and try to, uh, to ten feet and try to imagine a guy there that's about ten feet tall. This guy right here is nine feet tall. And this one's 13 feet tall. This one over here, the big guy, 36 feet tall. If you could find something like that, I definitely want to be your buddy and I want to photograph him. <laughs> yeah, we'll put it in here. Anyway, um, one of the things I want to tell you about on giants that I chased, I've got a whole drawer full of pictures on, of, um, some specific giants uh, here in the, in the United States. They found several in Florida and we've actually found several here in Utah and found several over in Nevada. Those are the three states that I know of. There's probably more than that but, I'm, but those are the ones I'm aware of. I've done quite a bit of research on the ones in Nevada and I've got some photographs of some of the ones here in Utah. Um, in Nevada, Lovelock Cave, if you know where Lovelock, Nevada is, out in beautiful Nevada, um, okay, uh, the city Lovelock, if you go kind of over on the west edge and then you go about eight miles south into the desert, there's what's called Lovelock Cave out there. And there's, and there's quite, a few, quite a story that goes with it, and, some, and they vary some, but they're pretty close. But basically what ended up happen, happening is in doing a bunch of research, the Indians, and I think they're Paiutes, could be wrong on that, but the Indians that are still alive today started telling these archaeologists, uh, as they're telling the history of their tribe, that there used to be tribes up to the north that were cannibals and they were giants, and they would come down and round up the Indians and take them back and eat them. And of course, they didn't look too kindly on that, they, and they were terrified by it. They were giants, they'd come down, whenever they saw them, they knew they were down to collect some bodies to take back and eat. And so, uh, one day one of the one of the men in the tribe was out hunting and he runs across a few of them and they're, and they're in, living in Lovelock Cave uh, or they're staying there in Lovelock Cave and so he, uh, he goes uh, back to his tribe and he says, hey, there, there's a group of them down here and I know where they're at and so the whole tribe picks up and instead of running they go up to where these guys are. They drive them back into the cave and, they, and, and stoning them and so forth and basically bury them up in, inside the cave and so uh, Anyway, over the years, the bats get in there and everything, and all the bat guana and that falls on them, and it, and it uh, mummifies them. And so they still have skin on them, they've still got hair on them, and so forth. And then uh, finally, uh, modern, and then moved to modern day, and, uh, 
And you had people go in there several years ago. Uh, bat guano was a huge thing. If you could find enough, it probably still would be today, but probably EPA and everybody would keep you from mining it. But it was great fertilizer. And so you got somebody in there mining out all this bat guana, and they come across and they dig out these Indian mummies uh, that are giants. They're 10 foot tall. And they, they've got red hair, they've got double rows of teeth, and they have six digits on each hand and on each foot. And I've had people tell me, well, I've heard a lot of BS stories before, but that's, that's one of the better ones I've heard, you know, six fingers on each hand, each foot. And I said, well, John Slaw went to school with me. We went to high school together. All his kids had six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot. And I know other people that have had the same thing in their family. Double rows of teeth. I had double rows of teeth when I was in junior high. I can't even tell you how many times they sent me to the dentist to pull out as many teeth as I could stand at a time because I had so many extra sets of teeth. And I said, that's a genetic thing. It's not that big of a deal. Red hair obviously isn't that big of a deal. Down in Florida, guess what? The giants have red hair, double rows of teeth, six digits on each appendage and that. And so, so anyway, uh, so they found these and they've had, I've done some quite a bit of research on it and I found I think something like 37 legal ar archaeology digs at, at Lovelock Cave. Probably five times that many illegal ones. Um, anyway, the, uh, a lot of the bones and different artifacts that, that were taken out went to some of the universities which were doing the digs out of California. However, uh, uh, Winnemucca, the big city of Winnemucca got some of the stuff and I've got a whole drawer full of photographs that different people have taken. At one time they had them out where you could see them and then when they passed the laws that you couldn't show the human remains anymore, they went in the back room. Well, if you knew they were there, you could go sweet talk some of the museum curators, go back in the back, and they'll let you photograph the skulls at least, and they had like three skulls. Well, and by the way, you, you read the stories, and is what was a favorite thing to do in the 1800s when they'd get into these, is you take the skull like it's a motorcycle helmet, and you put it on over your head. These things are huge. And so, uh, so I've got quite a few photos uh, taken from different people in Winnemucca uh, of these skulls, and they always put a uh, mold of a, of a normal jaw size next to them and they're just dwarf, very small. And I'll put quarters out on the countertop or whatever. Anyway, it was always one of my big deals I was going to go photograph these. And uh, one of the guys that works for KSL right now, he's one of their head uh, TV guys, cameraman, is doing, started doing a thesis on giants. Now it's the second one that I know of. I read a th uh, part of a thesis of a guy back east that was doing his research around the Ohio Valley and he had a ton of good stuff. But this guy here with KSL was doing one and so he went over to photograph them. He was going to video them with, because he's a cameraman and do, he's doing a video thesis. And so he goes over and he says, I want to see your stuff. I'm doing this video thesis. And they said, uh, absolutely not. They says two weeks ago the federal government came in here, told us if we ever showed those to anybody again, we're all going to prison for the rest of our life. They're shutting down the museum. They're going to quarter and draw us with horses. I mean, they'd really read them the riot act. You don't show them to anybody. And he says, well, you don't understand. I'm not local Joe from the bar wanting to see them or that. I'm doing a thesis on this, scientific thesis. He says, we were told nobody gets to see them. And he says, I want to appeal to your board of directors and that. So they assem assembled the board, the museum board, and he went in and, and presented his case, and they said, absolutely not. Okay, that, that's been a couple of years ago. So here about a year ago, and by the way, every year I say, well, this summer that's real high on my bucket list. I'm going over there. And then I found out from him that they wouldn't let anybody see him anymore. And I was heartbroken, but I thought, well, if I go over and talk to him, maybe they'll at least verbally give me some information that's interesting. So here, about a year ago, uh, has it been that long since we went over? About a year ago, we went over to Win Winnemucca to the museum, and we walked in, and there was nobody else in the museum except curators, and there was two women in the back room or something, and one of them immediately came out, and she starts saying, oh, we got a car collection over here, and we got this, and, and I says, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I says, I want some information on your giants. She says, I don't even know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? There's no such thing as giants. And, I, and we started in this conversation. And the more I talked to her, I think she thought I'd just come from the bar, or heard it from somebody at the bar or something. And I'd say, I'd start telling things about the history and everything. And, and when she saw I knew something, then she'd change her story and she'd add a little bit to it. But 
well, it wasn't really giants. They were taller than, you know, the regular Indian was five foot four, and they had a couple of skeletons that were six foot tall. And, and then I'd talk to her some more, and, and her story would change again. And after it changed a number of times, she finally got fed up with talking to me and figured I knew too much and that. So she walked over to a little school desk type thing, and she opened the top, and there was about a ream of paper of individual sheets and she pulled one off the top and came over and says here and she turned around and walked away and went back in the office so I read the paper and it was a pre-printed thing that they were told by the federal government what to give you that gives you this big baloney story about there's no such thing as giants and stuff and and that was it here go to, over to Winnemucca but uh, and I may have some still photos in here of some of the giants before we get out of here if I do I'll show them to you. Uh, let's thumb through them a little bit. Another 